Hello everyone, welcome. Today, I bring some updates for the mobile scene. We've finally got a driver update. A beta driver that promises to fix most graphical bugs and allows games that were previously impossible to run on devices with up to 6GB of RAM. It's important to note that custom drivers only work on Snapdragon devices. The compatibility of this custom driver covers almost the entire Snapdragon lineup, from the 665 series to the 800 series, including Gen 1 and 2, working well on both Adreno GPUs and the 600 and 700 series. For those with MediaTek devices, there aren't significant updates yet, but the community is trying to develop something. Programs like WinLater, which allows playing PC games on Android, already enable the use of alternative drivers on MediaTek devices, although it's a somewhat limited feature. Before we dive in, if you enjoy being the first to know about all the news in the Windows and Android scene, don't forget to like this video so it reaches more people. And if this is your first time here, remember to subscribe to the channel. Currently, 95% of the people watching the channel are not subscribed. Help me reach 10,000 subscribers so I can make a special video about my journey so far. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. And as mentioned earlier, the beta release of a new driver called Turnip focused on performance has been launched. This driver will directly impact applications like Skyline, Strato, Vita 3K, Dolphin, and Yuzu Android, both in their normal version and early access. The main goal of this driver is to make games that previously didn't open with 6GB of RAM now work with the use of this new driver. Of course, depending on your device, the performance may not be as good, so the fact that the game opens doesn't necessarily mean they become playable. An example of a game that didn't open before is Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, which wouldn't even start with 6GB of RAM. Now it opens, but as you know, Yuzu tends to leak memory, allowing you to play for about 20 to 30 minutes before the game simply closes. In general, as long as Yuzu doesn't create native recompilers for Android, there will always be issues with crashes or very high RAM requirements. However, a game that had a significant improvement was Super Mario Odyssey. Just like in Pokemon Legends Arceus, it was impossible to maintain good performance after a certain amount of gameplay because the app would slow down and eventually crash. This problem has been partially solved. The game can now maintain 60 FPS for much longer without crashes on a device with 8 GB of RAM. Currently, the best way to play this game is with Yuzu, and with this new driver, it has improved even more. It's worth noting that the game is still not in its ideal state, with issues in some objects, like grass. Next, we'll have a performance comparison in some games to analyze how this improvement was. Starting with Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, we can see that in the new version of the driver, there are no frame drops at any moment. However, being a beta version of the driver, some transparency bugs can be noticed. In this case, it only occurred in the bubbles. Still, it's notable that the game runs at a stable 60 FPS. Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 one of the games that had reports of being playable even on a Xiaomi Redmi Note 8, again shows a significant performance difference with the new beta driver. While the old driver has drops that go down to 21 FPS, the new driver can maintain 30 FPS, which is the standard for this game, without presenting issues like visual bugs or random crashes. In Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered, the old driver had problems, such as the reflection on cars not being rendered correctly, and it suffered from performance drops. There was a moment in my tests where the game reached 11 FPS. With the new driver, the performance is decent, without visual bugs and without frame drops. Pokemon Let's Go might be one of the lightest games ever made for the Switch, but unfortunately, it has mediocre performance on Yuzu, which can't maintain 30 FPS all the time. However, for those who want to play the game on the go and try the new driver, you won't see significant performance changes. The new driver didn't work miracles with Pokemon Legends Arceus, which, after a few minutes, has its performance drastically affected by users poorly ported recompilers and ends up crashing or freezing. For those who remember how long it took for Yoshi Crafted World to run correctly on Windows, you know that this is a very problematic game. However, with the new driver, I noticed a worsening of performance when running this game, with more FPS drops and, in general, a lower frame rate. And finally, a demonstration of the most desired games for those playing on Android, Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. 
Here, there are still no miracles, requiring 12 gigabytes of RAM to run the game correctly. Still, nothing prevents the app from freezing as it occupies all available memory. In Breath of the Wild, which is the game where I have the best performance, I can hardly maintain the game at 20 FPS while it's not compiling shaders, even using this enhanced version of the driver. In Tears of the Kingdom, the situation is even worse, with the app quickly making my interface, which shows statistics, close to save RAM that will be used in Yuzu. Since I started testing on Android, I haven't been able to complete the prologue of this game, as it always occupies all my RAM, and the app closes. And that was the video. I'll leave the links to this beta driver and also where you can find all the drivers to play your favorite games on Android in the video description. If this video was helpful for you, don't forget to leave your like. Until the next video. Yeah. 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 Yeah.